Hey there, Internet. This is Kevin Coons reporting for 360 Today. I'm here with my friend and filmmaker, Cece. Ciliana Trevino. Hi. We're going to be discussing Agnes Varda, legendary filmmaker who passed away today. I would say probably the most prolific female filmmaker in cinema history. Or like influential. I don't know. She's one of my favorite filmmakers. Um, just period. Just period. A big documentarian and artist and vivacious, brilliant light upon the world. What was your favorite film of hers? Uh, my favorite film by Agni Varda would be uh, The Gleaners and I from 2001. Um, that was the first film that introduced me to her uh, at CalArts Film Today. I was in a film class and um, it was just a breathtaking story about finding treasure in the trash mm -hmm. and um, always spoke to me and the way that she saw the world and the way that she presented a story with herself in it um, was a really sort of new way for me to think about documentary. It made me almost think like it was a film made by like a vlogger or like a YouTuber. Before vlogging. Before like vlogging became popular and she didn't put it out on YouTube, she put it out the Cannes Film Festival and stuff. But like what she was doing, just filming with a digital camera back before anyone was doing digital and mini DV stuff. And she just like was using her hand to like, I want to capture all these moments and they're, they're flying through my fingers. And that's how I think about vlogging sometimes. It's almost like journal writing because it's like you can't make it perfect, but you try and make something that you want to put out every day because you're trying to just capture the moments before it, it falls through your hands like sand. She had a real magical way of, of capturing that in, in, this, in this way that was uniquely her own. I don't know how, you know, she had her own style, but the way that she also quickly, you know, embraced digital media and the immediacy of it, she got it right away. And watching her explore digital media and, and capturing video in her film, you know, she takes us along on this journey to not just about, you know, finding stories or revealing stories that everyone has, um, either through their things or through what they collect or what they make from the things that they find, um, but just also the, the way that she, you know, gave a voice to people. Mm -hmm. And and again, and put herself in the story too, where you're you're exploring, you know, what people find in the trash and then digital cinema and the process of aging. Cause she also in The Gleaners and I, you know, talks a lot about her aging process and uh, which is just the way that she was able to layer all these parts of herself into this exploration of, of how people collect the leftovers was was really brilliant. And she makes it look easy, but of course it's, it's never quite that easy. I feel like she's like made a movie like almost everywhere too. Like when I first moved to the Bay Area, I was definitely aware of her, but I didn't know that she made a short film in Sausalito on this houseboat that her uncle owned, Jean Varda, who's a painter. And it just so happened I have friends living on that houseboat and I filmed a little movie there and I want to like dig up her movie and like look at the houseboat like from the past and, and the future. And I don't know, I, I was thinking about her last week actually because I was driving through Sausalito and I was like, man, it'd be so cool to like interview her. Like, what do you remember from that? Or like show her like in VR, the houseboat. And then like a going week, back in time. To yeah, the going film. back in time. And then like a week later, she passed. It's so sad. But, you know, I, I feel like she she was so prolific in a way. She doesn't need to travel anywhere anymore or promote movies. She's everywhere. Her last movie, Faces Places, um, I saw the SF premiere of it. And Mark Benioff, the guy who's, you know, Salesforce CEO, was introducing the film. And I think a lot of it had to do with it's about people being evicted from their homes and they're like graffitiing the faces of the people onto these homes because it's kind of like the the well the faces places is her documentary with the artist junior junior jr yeah I, I met him junior he had never seen junior, the gopro JR. fusion and he did this weird thing where he went around the fusion um he's the photographer muralist he takes mm -hmm. these large format photographs and um you know, paste them all over buildings. And he's working on a new piece now. He just tweeted about a piece that's gonna go in the Louvre. And I think it's probably uh, a tribute to, to Agni, but um, I'm hoping. I think uh, so I can't wait to check it out. But film together, I think, at the, 
I don't know. That yeah, that movie, like the way they they did that documentary, also is very spontaneous and organic. And you're watching the, the process of creation of these two amazing artists and how they explore the relationship that they have and the complications within their own art making process. And um, another just incredible movie that you know when you watch it collectively in the theater everyone goes on that journey together and she really i think that's what's so you know what i love about film is this like when someone can take you somewhere yeah uh, new or or just see things in a new way she the way that that the villages that they went through in this film were never the same will never be the same after they came through mm -hmm. just in the way that they brought people together I really appreciate in that movie too, like how she is so into like helping JR like create the film and craft it, even though she's kind of like in this retirement mode sort of thing. But like it's it's interesting and fun to see her so energetic and youthful. And then in contrast, they at the end of the movie go to see the other French New Wave filmmaker Godard and he's just completely shut off, doesn't even want to open the door. Doesn't want like, oh, you're a filmmaker. Right, he doesn't it. show up, right? Yeah. He and, doesn't, yeah. And so like that's always been something really powerful. I, I remember reading a quote the other day. Uh, Ted Hope posted this online and it's a Kurzawa quote sending it to Igmar Berkman on his like 80th birthday or something. It was like, you can't really make good artwork until you turn 80. It was like his takeaway, like, because you go back in this phase of being like a younger child in the world and seeing the world through like these sort of aged eyes, but also like youthful eyes. And I think that, that film really speaks to that faces, places. It's just very much like, feels like a, a film made by like a teenager or something. It's crazy. Well, she's, I mean, she, yeah, that's what was so, her, she's bigger than life, yeah. right? And she has that essential curiosity that you need to keep you at that level. I mean, she's a master. Yeah. And it, it shows what I mean, like, you, you know, as a student, you could look at her work and think, oh, she's she is just capturing life as it happens but there's just something about the way that her point of view things happen in front of the camera f for just her yeah. in a way that they don't for others and that is because she's been it's in her blood she's been doing it for decades mm -hmm. and and you, we get to kind of witness that but it what it wouldn't be something i would assume i could go and grab a camera the way that she did yeah. and come out with something like what she's made so <laughs> so it was very humbling, um, but just getting back to the film in yeah. Salcedo, that is such a beautiful document of a mm -hmm. time gone by. Yeah, you know the boats of Salcedo, the houseboats there was, you know, uh, an artistic community and a moment in time that you know really made you know, was part of that community that made San Francisco famous for being this, you know, the city of love. It was, it was so small back then too, like literally the street it's on now is called Varda Landing. Right. So if you're ever yeah. in Sausalito, you want to see this amazing house, but go to Varda Landing and just drive to the end and see it. What was the name of the film? I, I can't remember. Uncle, I mean, Uncle Pop, I forget his first name. She's meeting her family for the first time, she's right? Uncle, yeah. yeah, she figures out she's connected to this yeah. person and then she makes a documentary about meeting him for the first time and trying to piece together where he fits in her family and her yeah. origins. And, and then, of course, you're looking at, you know, San Francisco in the 70s, like, right? I, I want to dig up this movie. I've never hippies. seen it. Actually. So that they screened that film at, like, like I want to say like three years ago. Two or three years ago now, they had a, a retrospective of her films at the Ah. And they screened that film in 16 millimeter. Um, and one of the nights she was there as a special guest. And I just had the one question that I could ask. Yeah. And I asked her um, during her visit to the Bay Area or to San Francisco, where did she have dinner? Yeah. And she was like, well, Chez Panisse. Oh. Where else? Tag and Chez Panisse. <laughs> On that so note, the dog agrees. <laughs> on that note, I think that's a great way to end this piece. I, think, um, I want to thank you again for coming out yeah. and talking with well, me. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. This was fun, and it's always uh, it's always fun to talk film and, and you know, the, the people that kind of influence the way that we see the world. Definitely. The creators. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I earned your subscription today. Hit that notification button to stay up to date on the latest videos. Check out CC on Instagram. At Quirkly. And have a great day. Peace.